Hi, this slide uh, sort of details a case study that I personally had with uh, uh, a main warehouse of, of 10 individuals. Um, and in this warehouse, there was uh, of, of 10 people total, there was a full-time manager who was like a babysitter who had to make sure the people showed up, were working, that sort of stuff. There was a full-time inspector because the people turned over so much and were so ill-trained. There were a lot of mistakes. Now, they were paying about 80% uh, the average wage for warehouse workers in that particular metro uh, market, as be best I could quick and dirty uh, tell. And basically, service excellence was sort of an unmeasured thing. Uh, so I went in and I figured out the number one niche, the big eight of service excellence. I uh, put the numbers on the wall that we wanted to prove. I got a, a process manager we called the service manager was sort of a senior inside salesperson. I said, look, we're going to have to train everybody to do all these th sort of input skills better so we can reach these service goals. And pretty quickly after doing a survey of, of, of the 10 guys in the warehouse, I let three of them go. And the rest, I gave a 30% wage increase, which got them to 115% of the going wage for warehouse workers. And I said, look, you know, I, I let go 30% of the of the warm bodies, but not 30% of the net productivity. These guys didn't show up. If they did, they didn't do it unless you sort of did it with them, then you might as well have done it yourself. Or God forbid, if they did it on their own, they made a mistake, which would create eight times the hard and soft cost of just doing it right the first time, as far as the whole customer economic retention story. So, and if we can find one more guy to let go, in theory, I'm not opposed to doing that and giving the remaining team uh, that person's wages. Because my goal, my vision, is eventually to have a five-man team out here of self-managing equals. So they're not going to need a babysitter and an inspector, not that the ba the current manager inspector wouldn't want to be on that team because 150% of the going wage for warehouse workers is more than they're currently making. Um, but I think it's a great idea. Get rid of the overhead, and and you get you know, and, and you get paid to manage yourselves. So that's the vision. Uh, I don't expect that many of you will be on that team because if you had the attitude and aptitude that it would have taken, you wouldn't have been here to begin with and putting up with the old world that that this this company used to have. Uh, but at any rate. Uh, part of getting to this 150 is I've put a chart on the wall with all your names going down one side and across the top all the different functions in the warehouse. And as fast as you can occupy each one of these functions and do it well enough that people around you, you know, think you're a 10 and have a little oral and written test that's, you know, you know all the process procedures and so forth you need to know to do that job brilliantly and, you know, with your eyes closed habitually, then we'll give you a wage bump. So I could be paying you 100% of 150 or 120 of 150 or 130. It doesn't matter what whatever the portion difference is on a weighted basis. You'll get a bump moving you towards 150. Uh, but, and here's a binder with tabs for each one of these functions. And until there is documentation here about what the solve the job and so forth and some little test, we can't start doing the certifying. So each one of you is responsible for first and foremost coming up with documentation so you can certify at the job you're currently doing. And I put it up on the wall, gave him the binder, said, self-organize, figure it out. I don't have time. Uh, and this is part of, you know, how, why I want to pay big wages to have, you know, big boys and girls doing the job and manage themselves and growing themselves. Well, nobody did anything. And then my manager, my branch, my, my warehouse manager had an envy power meltdown. Basically, he was upset that he had been there for five years getting cost of living adjustments and sort of getting treated like a mushroom in the dark with a lot of poop thrown on him and he was expected to grow. And these new guys, some of them had been there two weeks, two months, were getting these big raises and these big opportunities. And he was thinking, why shouldn't they suffer for five years like I did? And I said, well, look, why do you care? I mean, you know, you're moving along too, and you're, you're, you know, you've got a 30% wage increase on top of, you know, the highest wage out here. So, you know, you're, you're going to be making more too in a better culture. He just could not get over um, the envy, you know, the, the resentment that he, the regret that he had, had put in all his time and been treated so badly. So I went out and I hired an additional new guy. Now, he 
was a fellow who not only would have been a fantastic warehouse manager, he could have been a fantastic service manager from inside sales through the warehouse and out to the customer, et cetera. Uh, he was somebody who could, you know, grow into the jobs I would want to promote somebody into for where I was growing to. So I said, and his name was, let's just say Joe. I said, Joe, here's the deal. I'm going to pretend like you're just another warehouse guy. I'm going to put you in here and I'm going to start you off at 150% of the going wage for warehouse workers in this metro marketplace. And uh, people are going to freak. And I'm going to give everybody the resume and I'm going to put you under the, the bright light. And I'm going to say, here's Joe. I'm going to already, I'm going to pay him the most of anybody out here. Uh, but here's the deal. If he doesn't run around and help every single one of you document what you're doing and get that in the binder and then certify with you as fast as he possibly can, I have to get rid of him. So what I'm doing is I'm paying for his track record because he's 32 years old and he's married, he's got a couple of kids and let's go through his track record on his resume and it explains why he has the attitude and, and aptitude that I'm looking for in a 10 and uh, and so be it. Now, I also, the more I pay, the more I expect and he'll be weeded in a minute if he doesn't perform all this stuff. Now, if any of you would like to put a resume together and present it to the team and say, my resume shows that I have the experience, the maturity, the track record that Joe does, I will also put you up to 150% of the going wage and you will have to match or beat, you know, Joe's uh, learning capability and facility. In other words, he's going to enable the rest of you to move along or you're, you're out in a minute. Nobody took me up on that offer. So Joe came in early, stayed late. He did all the stuff he needed to to cre you know, create, in a sense, the Learn and Earn Certification Training Program. Did it all in record time. During that time, actually, the branch manager uh, moved on, uh, didn't fit in into our culture, was not up for praisings and all that sort of stuff. And so for a while, Joe became the de facto warehouse manager. Now, the original 10 people, only one actually was a survivor on that all-star five-man team, which did come come to, to, to fruition. So knowing that that was probably the case, I had gone and started immediately proactively recruiting. So I had people I'd love to hire for high-performance warehouse capability on file. Um, and, uh, and constantly saying, look, everybody, everybody wants the gets, uh, you know, I want the wage and all sorts of stuff, but nobody wants to do the responsibility, the accountability. So one by one, in a sense, in this very transparent, high performance environment, they pretty much weeded themselves and I replaced them steadily with new people. So that's a way of, of starting a transition from a, uh, a low expectation economic culture to a high performance one. End of the story. Thank you.